So, welcome to the eighth annual so, Cambodia Town Film Festival, uh, the virtual edition, 2020. <laughs> so, thank you all for joining us today at the CTFF Directors Panel. Uh, today, please welcome, uh, please join me in welcoming two of our incredible filmmakers. Um, this year, we have a whole great a whole lineup, but in this uh, in this segment, we will be speaking with um, two of our most uh, prolific filmmakers that are, are has, has been making waves, has been creating a lot of amazing uh, content. And today we'll be doing a deep dive into their stories, their journey, and also kind of uh, where things are going next for them. So first off, I'd like to introduce you, Mr. Suk Pisal. Uh, Bang Suk Pisal is a director and producer hey known for films such as In the Life of Music, uh, Gems on the Runs, one of my personal favorites, and also uh, Poppy Goes to Hollywood. Um, in addition, he is also a music producer and the founder of Clap Your Hands. Welcome, Bong, to the panel. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Chad. Uh, and um, yeah, hi, everybody from the Cameron Town Film Festival and whoever is watching right now. Awesome. So, do you, yeah. Yep. And Hope then everybody's uh, well. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and then our second guest on the panel is Lamont, uh, Riti Manope, also known as Yuki. Uh, she was born and raised in Cambodia, graduated from the Department of Media and Communications. She is a former producer, director, and the BBC, I'm sorry, director at the BBC Media Action. And she's now the founder of Plung Gop, uh, which in English uh, means campfire. And if I pronounce that wrong, I apologize, but um, it's pretty interesting. And so we'll learn more about that in our interview today. Uh, Plung Gop is a uh, group of dynamic young individuals who are passionate about the arts and film. Uh, Young Love, the movie, is her featured directorial debut, and um, that's going to be uh, playing in this uh, in this year's uh, CTFF a Film Festival, and we're totally looking forward to that. Um, having said that, welcome to the both of you, and we're super excited. I'm super excited. So. <laughs> yeah, we, we are excited too, so. Awesome. Yeah. So to start off, uh, Bong Vassal, I'd like to start off with you, because um, number one, you've been in this game, you've seen... You know, a, for a long time. Um, I, I know your, your story. I know, you know we've met a few times, but for those who are not familiar with you, um, let's start with uh, a brief introduction uh, real quickly, but also kind of um, for those who have never met you, um, you you're, you're kind of a big deal in my opinion, but what, what I would like for our audience to learn is what was your journey like um, from when you first started to where you are now? What was that, that point in time and if I may, by the way, I know we're talking film, but your history goes back in music. That's kind of where things started even yeah, before yeah. that. So how about we start there? Like, what was that point in time? You're a young man, right? Full of ambition, hopes and dreams. And I believe you started in France, right? Yeah, um, yes, yes. Can we, can we start there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, okay. yeah, basically, I, um, you know, I, I think I, I, I was always an artist since I, I was a kid, uh, so I, I really, I was a very introverted person. I drew a lot. So I did a lot of illustration when I was a kid. And I was watching a lot of movies and I was listening to a lot of music. So from the beginning, since my young age, I, I had a, a, a huge interest and passion for art, for music, film, and, and, and illustrations and, and art in general. So, but uh, in terms of study, I, I never could really um, join any art school or whatever because my grade was so low and I wasn't really good at school. And, but I, I got into graffiti, I got into rap when I was in France. Um, I think I was one of the first Asian rapper back in the 80s and the 80s. Uh, so I got into tag and graffiti, hip hop and stuff like that. And it's only, I think it's only after, um, in year 2000 that I got back into the art scene uh, in Cambodia here because um, yeah, I mean, I guess when I arrived in Cambodia back in the 90s, there was no way for me to survive off arts. There was no way for me to, you know, to, to live off arts. And so I had to do different kind of job. And one job lead to another. And my the job that I had when I started to go back into the art scene was uh, art director at this agency, at an advertising agency. So I was doing a lot of designs, graphic designs, um, involved in campaign, you know, advertising campaign, stuff like that, being a creative director. And in 2000, yeah, in 2000, 2001, I got back producing music. Uh, I mean, I got not, I got back, but I started producing music in 2001 because I stumbled upon a, this software that, that, I, that, that helped me, you know, make it easy to sample music and to 
loop and mix music. So I started to sample Khmer music back then and turn into hip hop beats. And then the, the filmmaking thing uh, that, I mean, that's, that's how the music started. And, uh, and for the music thing, uh, for the film thing is, uh, I was I always wanted to be a director, a uh, film director since the young age. I mean, I was raised in the eighties. I watched, uh, I grew up on Steven Spielberg movies and all the eighties directors, you know, uh, horror and science fiction and, and, and whatnot. And I always wanted to be a film director, but music got me, I think music and advertising got me, give me the chance and the opportunity to really start uh, doing my first videos. And so I started with, you know, waiting videos and TV commercials and music videos for Clap Your Hands at first. That's how I kind of trained to, you know, to direct and, and uh, music videos and stuff. And as I moved forward in the advertising world, I started to direct, you know, TV, uh, TV commercials um, and then and so on and so forth. And, and I also worked for the BBC. I think the BBC Media Action in Cambodia gave me the opportunity to be, to direct my first drama. I mean, it was a TV series called Loin Boon, I think. I'm up at Yuki work on the season two, three, or four. I forgot. Two. I, yeah. I, you work on the Loi Nine. We work on. I work on Love Nine, which is like, yeah, like the, exactly. the, the, the the daughter of the Loi Nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so the, the Loi Nine was the first season of, the, of that series and that show, and it evolved into uh, Love Nine. So uh, the, the project on the BBC uh, Media Action gave me the first opportunity to, to direct a, a kind of a drama fiction uh, uh, narrative based uh, uh, content. It was, a, I think, I mean, I forgot how many episodes we did, but that was my first um, test at directing something that's not commercial, not actually commercial. And then after that, I went on, you know, we're directing, you know, working on, on feature films. And one of my friends uh, first was uh, Comfortably Lost, uh, Quentin Cousin. Who, who ended up being my co-director on Crawford, Gems on the Run. And after that, Poppy Goes to the came and, and then In the Life of Music and et cetera, et cetera, while, I'm, while I was still um, managing and, and developing Clappy Hands on the side. Awesome. So you came in the 1990s. How, how old were you then? I was 22, I think. 22, 23. Old. Yeah, I arrived in Cambodia on, on, on in the year of 93. Okay, 1993. Yeah. You're 22 years old. Back then, Cambodia was a much different country. Oh, it was. It was. There was <laughs> nothing, man. There was. It was far west. It was. It was nothing. It, it was just beginning, coming out from these elections, and there was no car beside the white cars from the UN, and and there was nothing, man. It was. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So hold that thought, because I, I really want to learn more about how you, you came in at, at a time where Cambodia was like at, at at that time it was kind of a dangerous place to come to, and then. It was, it was. Press forward, right? So that's yeah, yeah. all that thought. I want to dig more into that. Um, in the meantime, let's introduce our second guest, um, Le, uh, Riti Lamotvet. And please correct me if I said that wrong. No, uh, you say it correctly. Okay, thank you. And yeah. also known as Yuki, right? Um, so uh, so let's start. And then, so same thing with you, right? So if, if we can start, I know you're a filmmaker now, but let's go back to the time where something happened, you saw something, you heard something, an experience took place, and you're like, okay, I want to be a filmmaker. Okay, can we go there? Can we, like, how old were you, let me ask? You know, what, what was the setting like? Um, you know, what triggered you to make the decision to kind of bring you to where you are now? Okay, so I was born and raised here in Cambodia, and uh, so I studied at media, a uh, department of media and communication, uh, and then from there, it, uh, but my first job was to be a radio, uh, to be uh, a radio host. So then it it tried me to uh, to track me into uh, to in, to have an interest in um, in media. And then I got to study in the DMC. And then uh, on the third year of DMC, I got a scholarship to do the exchange program in Thailand. And then I pursue my uh, my study uh, of uh, learning to 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 run the TV. And then um, a short film, and from there I start to 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 find my own uh, interest that already like deep down inside of me, like uh, to produce the film, uh, and that was there still there until I finished my thesis uh, in 2014, and from there I um, I I decide to do a documentary film to finish my my fourth year, and at that where I start uh, playing cook. Uh, the campfire 
and it's where we found Bontum, the village festival. So then uh, at 2014, uh, running Bontum at the same time of uh, graduated from the Department of Media and Communication and going to work for BBC Media Action. So it's two, two, two main things at the same time. And so running festival for the first time, I have no idea what it is. It's just like, uh, just come to, to us uh, at the moment that we just want to create uh, the environment for everyone to see the performing art. And at the same time, I can film it. Uh, and then working for BBC, uh, BBC Media Action, allow me to write, to produce, and to direct uh, the TV series and uh, sitcom. And then it's, uh, it's it somehow it's confused me whether I want to pursue my career as a filmmaker or as an art curator. And then uh, after working for like two years at BBC Media Action, I fully focused on the festival. And then during two years of working for the festival, to the third year, I got to know a small, small band. And then we found the team to produce like, I think it's my past is very similar to Bong Vista, like the music get me. Mm -hmm. So, and then from uh, working with small, small band, we, uh, we got to do like the music video, uh, like in the way that telling the story by using the music. And at the same time with the festival, and then we go for there first. And I almost lost uh, uh, the belief in myself that I can be a filmmaker until uh, on the fourth year of the festival, I got back and then start writing. And then, um, and then uh, I got a call from uh, Gong Chat Production, uh, Gong Chat Picture. Uh, offer me to do a feature film and then I I was not so sure at that time that whether I can make it or not but then you would try for the uh, like spending one year on writing and then uh, and then yeah so we we finished the feature film together and then at the same time uh, taking and learning from what I had uh, experienced with the festival to inject back to the film and that's that's how the journey you know it's like a uh, music and film coming in the way that uh, I'm still learning about myself. Also, um, let's say uh, I'm very young in the film industry. It's just like two years and I just uh, finished my uh, film lab uh, at the Locarno Film Festival recently. So it's, it's, it kind of gave me the new window and then the hope uh, and the light of what I really want to do uh, with the film uh, uh, career as a filmmaker. So okay. that's, that's, that's how the journey looked yeah. like, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So it was a very gradual, organic process that you went through. It wasn't something like this, like, ah, oh, I just, I want to do this now. But it was, so it wasn't like a very sharp turn. It was a very slow, but organic process for you, right? Um, okay, so you said, you mentioned that Gong Cha came to you with a script. This is Young Love? Yeah, yeah, the Young Love. So okay. they come with uh, the concept of, uh, they want to give the new narrative of the story, of Cambodian story in a way that telling about the life at the current of Cambodian youth, like the teenager. Right. And uh, because they see me working a lot with the teenagers throughout the festival, the music, and then, uh, and then we sit down and talk like, what story could we, we could offer to the, to the local also at the same time, uh, giving the, 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 the new narrative and the image of the current Cambodian to the outside world. Mm. So that's how we come up with the idea of the young love, the character, the story, and uh, the plan, and, and it starts from there. Yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So with, with any project, with any endeavor, there's a set of challenges, right? So this is a question for the both of you, right? As artists and creatives, there's really no blueprint right? <laughs> you kind of just kind of figure and create things as you go, right? So um, th this question, so let's, um, you can go first, y Yuki, on this question, which is, what were some of those challenges, those moments where you're like, oh, what am I doing? Like, oh, like, is this right? Is this like, you really had to question yourself. Is this the right way? Those, those, those moments where you're like really, really, not really sure what you're doing, but take us to a time where it was really challenging and how did you overcome that, you know, those challenges? So with, with the filmmaking, it's, uh, it's somehow it's complicated in my term. Uh, I mean, like my, at my personal level, I was not so sure what I want to tell, like the, my statement might say, uh, but when you get yourself into the script writing 
and then you look at it, go back at the time and having the teamwork to, uh, to read your script and then give feedback and stuff. I think that that process somehow give me the, to shape what, uh, what I want to say as an artist. And, and, and also with the film industry here in Cambodia, it's, 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 it's just a starting point. Like comparing the last four years, we don't really have many cinema, but now we have more screen. Uh, we get spoiled of uh, watching uh, the high quality uh, film from all around the world while we're struggling making our own. So, so you know, you know, when you are making one, you are in between like, what can you offer to your people if it's your story for your Cambodian, you know? So uh, that is a struggling inside me, like what story can I offer and then how I can tell that story. And also it's my, you know, I, I produce a, a few short film and then like from that few short film, you jump to the feature film. It's, it's crazy. And then, uh, um, so yeah, but I think like teamwork is very important at that at the time when you are making like you craft you craft the piece. It's uh, it's everything. It's it's teamwork is everything. It's not just about me. It's about my co-writer. It's about my producer. It's about like the creative behind it who who give their pieces and then craft it and then we can uh, make make one. I was like you know like the and then now when I look back to Young Love, I see a. Uh, uh, thing that I could fix and then improve and you know because there was so many things to say and now I find it okay we we can make it our own in in maybe in a new way you know that is a uh, something that I will experience and explore in the next uh, feature film that I'm on yeah so it's a it's a it's a, a long process like of understanding yourself also um, because of course in my opinion I want to I want to make a film that can talk to my people, not just to represent uh, like, okay, Cambodian story, get to getting an award from the outside world. But, but, but for me, more importantly, is the film that can talk to my people, that, that can connect to the people, the local here. And at the same time, it gives impacts of uh, 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 like saying the, the language of Cambodian cinema to the outside world as well. So yeah, okay. yeah, that's, Thing, yeah. Okay. And, and okay, so Bong Rusal, same question to you, sir. Um, as an artist for a long time, I'm sure you've had your share of challenges. So share with us um, one or two moments where you're just like, it's dark, it's cold, it's lonely, right? And you're just like, well, what am I doing? And you're just like, okay, how do I get out of this? Right? Yeah, and, I, and you, <laughs> I'm not sure we come to that. Yeah, I mean, I had, I, had a, I had a lot of story, I mean, very dark story about being an artist in Cambodia. And I think like, like uh, Yuki said, um, basically, I, I, I've started, I mean, earlier than, than Yuki, I started in when there was nothing here. There was no real music industry. There was no film industry. And, and like Yuki said, the music industry for me and the film industry just started five years ago. And before that, there was no way to monetize or to make money or to show your film or to have people appreciating your music or even buying your music or even, you know, sponsoring your artist. Um, and so I think what we what we are doing now, even uh, it's, it's a case, I think, for the Arctic uh, generation is that we are building ourselves as, an, as artists. We are making ourselves, we are creating ourselves, we are building ourselves as we are building the industry at the same time. And, and I mean, now it's a bit easier, but it's still very hard to, to live off arts and music, films and et cetera. Uh, but it's much better than five years ago or 10 years ago when I started. I mean, I started 15, 20 years ago uh, for the music thing. But at the same time, I never cared about music. I don't think that Yuki cared about making money and cared about money in general. I think we all we cared about was trying to express ourselves through arts and say the things that we wanted to say and, and build this narrative that we, we had in mind. So the challenges we had for me is my, for me, particularly for me is my generation. I mean, I'm actually maybe, I'm too old to be part, I'm too old to be part of the young generation and I'm too young to be part of the old generation. So I'm, I'm stuck in the middle somewhere <laughs> by myself, I think. And 
And uh, the, the big problem for me as an artist was that I had family. I had kids very early on in, in, in my life. I had three kids and, you know, I have this, I'm running the two companies and I was always operating as an artist and never cared about the business. And that mindset gave me a lot of trouble financially mm. because I never cared about the bottom line. I never cared about making money. I was, I always cared more about the narrative, the creative, you know, pushing the boundaries of, of, of creativity, you know, putting all the money into producing something cool and not caring about how much is going to bring me back. And that, that mindset gave me a lot of troubles, which I, I don't know if people know about it. I don't think people knew, really know about it, but that's something that I, I was in, in situation where I was, you know, bankrupt. I mean, I, I can say it now, after in the life of music, I had to close down my company for a year because I did two movies back to back, Poppy Go Silly Hollywood, and then I did In the Life of Music. Of course, we were paid a fee, you know, as you know, line producer and stuff, but we were not generating any money on the side while we're doing we were working on that. So I I did I went through a really big fall in, in, in 2016 because of that, because spending so much time doing making more arts than making money and having a family having kids in international school and all that stuff you know i was just struggling juggling with money and and trying to you know make ends meet at the same time i was happy as an artist but when i was going back to um being a responsible father or responsible business person i wasn't happy about myself because i was not doing good you know financially mm -hmm. so but, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's, it's also because a choice. It wasn't not because I was a, bus a bad business person or no, no. It was a choice. I think I, I decided not to think about money, but I decided to think about creating something cool, good for Cambodia. And that's all. I mean, I mean my, my, uh, the way I started was about because my passion for the art, for music and film, but also I wanted to build new narrative about Cambodia. I was, I got sick and tired of, of the media and people talking about corruption and, and the Khmer Rouge, about all this stuff that, that was bad about Cambodia, but nobody was talking back when I started in the early 2000s, nobody was talking about the, the beautiful culture and the art scenes and the music scene that we, we were having here. So I, I took that choice. I took the, you know, the, 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 the choice to talk about all those things and, and doing that have a cost, of course, you know? And so I've been through a lot of that, period um you know three years four years ago or even recently but at the end of the day i'm i'm you know i even like two years ago i even forces myself to decide between keeping music or keeping keeping film you know i had to choose i couldn't i couldn't uh, keep one of them because one of them is not making money i mean two of them i mean yeah not even one the two industry that we are in i mean the film and the music is not really making money i'm saying at the end of the day it's not really making money not yet I mean, it's, it's going to start soon. I can see that. But back in those days, nothing, man. So I was at one point, I had to decide. I said, yo, Vissali, you got to choose. You got to go fit, you gotta keep film and you can do TV commercial. You can make some money or you can keep music when you're not making anything. You know, even feature film, we're not making any money. I mean, people believe that crop it, puppy goes to Hollywood in the live music. I'm making tons of money. Nothing, man. I mean, nobody knows about these things, you know, only the producers and the filmmakers knows about the struggles and what we're going through. People only see the red carpet. People don't, people don't only see the interview, the travel, go to festival. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. But man, we're not making any money from this, this, this whole hustle. Yeah, so yeah. I had to choose, choose one day. And at the end of the, my self conversation, I said, fuck it yourself. You know, you get one life to live. If, your destiny is to make music and film, make music and film and fuck the rest. That's it, man. This is the how you're going to live. Take that. It's a curse. Be cursed. Be proud of it. Just keep doing it. Keep moving it until you cannot move anymore. So I made my mind, I made up my mind three years ago to say, this is my life. You know, I didn't choose it really, but let's go for it. That's it. And that, sir, is how legends are made. <laughs> I don't know, but, you but know. um. That's, that's, that's amazing, man. And, and, this, and this is exactly why I ask these questions, because so many people get excited and inspired to become artists, and they're all about the expressions and so forth. But there are certain pitfalls that a lot of people just, you just can't foresee as artists, because it's all about, you know, living in their, you know, 
living in their heads, if you, if you will. Yeah. Um, but in your case, there's a reality of, oh, we have bills to pay. Oh, we need to provide three kids and a wife and you have to provide, provide for your family. So those are realities. And so having said that, and this is for the both of you, how do you balance that? How do you say, you know, feed and, and, and satisfy your creative spirit, but also pay the bills, right? Be economically sound and provide for your family and yourself. Like, how do you, where's that? If you were to give advice to yourself, your younger self, and also for future aspiring artists, you know, to, uh, to succeed in, in arts, what would you say? <laughs> yeah, when I, okay, so back to what Movistar have said, I think it's a, a, like to be an artist here in Cambodia, we, we fall on the same road, just on like a different uh, path of how we look at it. And I think I, I was there as well, but, uh, but see, I'm still single because I know that it's going to be, bring me more complicated kind of, you know, okay, married life, kid and all of that. So um, it's not mean that being an artist, you have to be single to, for easier life, no. But it, it, uh, we can see that it, uh, it's, it's, it gives you a lot more of responsibility as a, as a person to handle, to be a happy artist or to, have, to just make a normal living lifestyle, you know. And then uh, at the end of the day, it's about how to balance. And then to ask me back uh, how, to, how, how I balance it, I think I still find a way to balance what I'm doing now. But one thing that I, I am so sure at the moment that it was different before last uh, three years, I actually almost quit film that I fully focus on the festival and the music that, okay, this is it. I, I don't think that I can uh, uh, pursue my career as a, uh, as a filmmaker, not because it doesn't make any money, but because I think I have more responsible and, uh, uh, and and it, it need me more at that time to uh, fully focus on that. And then I think it, uh, it, it was right at that moment to fully focus on one thing. And then uh, now I think like uh, the music and the festival, it's kind of give me a step ball. Like they are in a good shape now that I can pull myself back to uh, look and then to find myself in, in the film. So... Uh, so yeah, I was, I was in, in, in the between whether I choose film or the music. And now I was like, okay, let's find the balance, how we can live uh, with two different hats, like one as the music producer and then uh, again as a film maker and how you balance the life. And uh, at the end of the day, we just want to be a happy artist, uh, making statement and express ourselves for this nation, uh, hoping that we can inspire or shaping uh, the future of the industry in, the, um, in, 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 in our country. And um, to give myself uh, like advice, uh, I'm not sure sure because I think uh, I was satisfied in what I have done so far and I learned and then every time I get lost and I go back to my past and then look at it in different way. Like uh, I was very mad at myself in the last two years that why I, I quit the film, why I stopped the film. But, but right now, when I look back again, it's like, okay, it was a good choice back at the, to the, those times because I give my, sp my time space to uh, reset what I really want. So it, it doesn't matter how, how your past look like, but it's matter how you look at it and then learn from it. So then uh, I think I... And learning and then getting to know Bong Vista, learning about his, sto his, his, his story. And I think like, mm, I'm, I'm not different from the, I, I thought that I'm, I'm different, like, okay, having different, you know, work at the same time. But then when you, when you look at other artists, um, we have to do that in, in this industry, in, in Cambodia. We cannot just be purely uh, filmmaker full time and uh, make a living here. So I don't say that we don't have choice, but uh, we have to make the best choice for us to, uh, to, to um, create our own kind of lifestyle that we, we want to do. And then it's not just for a short term, it's for the long term. How, because you're not 
I'm not going to, you know, like we are not going to make just one or two women fitness. We want to make it more. So how we balance it and then we go for the long term. So, and then uh, I think it's like for Wong Pisa generation have paved us the way to where I am now. And then hopefully to where I am now, we can pave the way for the next generation that they can come here and then go faster and further than us. So that's what I, I hope, like at least if I cannot be something, but my next generation will be something more because we, my Bong Vista generation, my generation have done something at least and then they can carry on and then go further and further. That's, that's what uh, keep me believing that we all make change, uh, whether it's small or big, but uh, never lose hope and never doubt in, um, in the potential that what we can make in this country. And then I think I'm glad uh, that, uh, you know, even the, the market, the industry here in Cambodia is small, but at least it gives us opportunity to express and to do what we are doing now. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, it's okay. a good start. That's great. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, I think you, you answered my next question. Right? Oh, sorry. Because, well, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned earlier that, you know, it was important, you know, you really want to, to connect and communicate with your peer groups or the younger folks, right? Yeah. I'll ask you, me. So, why why is that important to you i think um why is important because like if we're looking uh, back to our history like just just look at to encode what for example or other temple what is what 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 was the idea of our ancestor to build something like that for me what i see is they want to say something that hey this is what we have done in our generation so how about you and that question always with me, like, how do I see what my generation have done for the next generation, at least for the next five years? What is my remark? What is everyone remark in our generation? And especially coming, uh, like uh, having a life of the second generation after Khmer roof, we kind of lose our identity. We kind of lose our, uh, the foundation of who we are, the soul of Cambodian. Because like, of course, we, we have to catching up with the modern society, civilization, all of that technology. But at the same time, we kind of like, who are we, you know, as a Cambodian, a modern Cambodian, right? So, um, and what we have done so far in our generation, besides the fact that we always look back to a thousand years ago, like, hey, we have Angkor, we have temple, we have all of that uh, culture that, okay, uh, all of that um, performing art, but that was our ancestor generation have done to us but look at us what have we done so i think it's very important for us to think about how we talk to the next generation just like our ancestor have done to us leave us with a lot of treasure that we have to understand to learn and to revive and to move on not just to be all happy all the time that ah we have all of this and then that's it no so it's very important to to con to understand who we are and then to connect and um, to see the future more because it's not, it's not just about now, but it's about the future of Cambodia. I think uh, right after the Khmer rules, uh, we we back to the year zero and now we are in the processing of building our identity again. And then uh, to shape up what do we want to, what do we want Cambodian to look like and to speak to the rest of the world. Besides we have been known as like, okay, Khmer roof, Anchor, what? That's it. Just the only two things that we have been known all, all everywhere we go. You know, like uh, it's not a shame, but it's a it's a true fact that we have to accept, and we have to think like, is that a good thing or the bad thing? And what have what can be done through the the industry we are in? Like for the music, okay, we do have our own sound, but we kind of forget it. We try and catching up like the pop culture, which is good but we also have our own sound. So what is the sound of Cambodian at the current generation? Okay, and then what is the story of Cambodian at my time? Okay, if we're talking about love, if we're going to love in the, in the past time, at Tom Thiel, uh, uh, they have their perspective on seeing how love looks like. We do, I do have my perspective on the how love looks like. So it's, 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 it tells the story of time, you know, it's very important to pass no, on, to make uh, one and then to pass it on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's so refreshing because, I mean, for a yeah. long time, much of our identity has been Angkor Wat, Khmer Rouge, mm -hmm. and back and yeah. forth. But 
Um, coming back to you, Bong Vassal, one of the things, uh, Jones on the Run, right? When I watched that, it was so refreshing. Number one, it was so funny. It was just hilarious. Um, well written, great stories, great characters. But number two, there was very little, to, if anything, about Angkor Wat or Khmer Rouge, right? Yeah. Um, to me, as a Khmer person, having, it's like, it's like, oh, finally, something different, something new, a different narrative, a different, you know, dialogue. I found that refreshing, right? Um, and, and a lot of my peers did, did too, you know. Um, it's, I think it is important that we never forget what happened during the war and so forth, but you guys, the two of you and your generation, your peer groups, uh, uh, it was, um, and also Poppy, you know, Poppy goes to Hollywood, you know, you, it's a story about, these are, there's humor, there's characters, and they just happen to be Cambodian, right? These are human stories that has happened to be Cambodian. Um, but anyhow, uh, so let, let's, let's do a quick dive in, in, into your current films, right? What were some highlights um, in, in the making of your films? You know, so everything's going well, and you're like, yes, this is it. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm so happy about this. What, uh, give us, uh, share us some examples um, of, of those, those happy moments when things uh, worked out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, yeah, I think I think for, for me, for me, it's it's it, it was never easy. It was never easy to make a film. I mean, every every feature film that I worked on had multiple challenges, and 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 we we lost a lot of blood and sweat and time, and and at the end of the day, we didn't earn much beside you know having our name out there in in billboards or whatever and and, and stuff like that. But um, but I think the at the end of the day, the achievement is what has ha, have made us all happy about what we we've, we've been through and, and what we've done. At the end of the day, um, you know, I think I feel that everybody wants to create something here in Cambodia. They want to do something. They want to make films, and and they some of them are aware of what they have to go through to make it happen, and some don't yet until they they go through the first feature and the second feature. So. Um, Highlights. I mean, every every time we wrap a film, it's always a happy moment. When you finish a film, when you finish the the, the, the last day of production, <laughs> photography or the last day of post production, you are so happy about everything. And and no matter what you've been through, uh, uh, and so yeah. Uh, um, uh, there's, I think that there's so many moments, and I can I can list them uh, all, all, all of it right now. But um, it's um, I think I think it's not easy to make a film. I think it's it's a lot of investment. It's a lot of uh, sacrifices. Um, but at the end of the day, and mostly for my generation, and, and maybe hopefully also for UK generation, is that like she said. It's about bringing something that will shape the future of the art scene and the film scene and the music scene. It's not really about it's not really about us actually. It's it's yes we are I think realizing realizing a dream of ours. We are doing something that we want to do. At the same time, because we're not making money, because we're not getting so much out of it. At the end of the day, it's more a personal feeling. That. Besides that everything that we are doing now is to really, like I said, again, we are building ourselves. We are, as we build the industry and, and as we see the industry moving forward, that's also makes us happy. I mean, I'm very happy to see, you know, how many music label, contrary to what people might think, but I'm very happy that, that, that how many music label there is now in Cambodia, how many artists, how many rappers, how many singers, how many bands, and how many people wants to make movie. And I think that's what we need. And going back on, on what Lam uh, Alpic said, and I think that was part of the previous questions, I think I, I, I would never give myself any advice. I would never change what I, I went through. I think I needed to go that, through that and I would not change anything to my story because I think I needed to do what I needed to do. Even though it was hard, even though I didn't make any money, even though I went through some really big falls and big dark moments in my life, but I was always happy waking up every morning to go to work and do the things that I did. And why? Because like Lamarpik said, Yuki said, I think 
we had a calling and this calling is our past is our civilization the things that we had as Khmer people i believe i truly believe that as Khmer people we have creativity in our bloodline we have that in our blood it's it's in our blood culture arts creativity is in our blood and there's many evidence of it throughout our history and so what happened between 75 and 79 is just fucked up and something went wrong and and if you really think about it what happened in 70, between 75 and 79 it's Khmer doing bad to other Khmer people there was nobody coming here to do bad to us you know so something was messed up so I, I felt myself, I felt, and I think Yuki felt it, uh, feel it as well, is that we have a mission. We have something to do when it's bigger than us, it's bigger than, than, than making our ego happy. Uh, uh, and, and we have to do it. And I think, I truly believe there's, there's in the future, there's a, there's, a, there's a golden age coming around the corner, but it won't come if none of us is not doing anything for it to come. You know what I mean? So I always preach people to, to do things, to start things, to create things, to, to, to do all these things, whatever they could do. And, 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 and I'm honest when I, when I say that the more production pe people we have, the more filmmaker, the more singer, the more producer, the more music producer we have in Cambodia or around the world, Cambodian music producer or filmmaker, and the better it is, the better the chance we have to build, to rebuild that golden age that we used to have. I mean, doing Angkor Wat, maybe, maybe also in the 60s. I mean, if you see the 60s and, and how vibrant our music scene and our film scene was, you, were like, you, you have to, it, there's something special about us and music and art and culture. And I think this is what people should bank on. And mostly now in a digital world where content is king, you know, everybody needs music, everybody needs film, everybody needs series, anybody needs contents. But imagine if you take out music from our society, you take out film from our society you take out contents and fun things and all these things the world is nothing there's no flavor so you got to believe that <laughs> music art film is the soul of our nation this yes. is also the soul of the whole world man without music without film there's nothing absolutely and and man i i can talk to the both of you guys for hours um but unfortunately you know we're, we're coming short on time I can't um, hear you. can you guys hear me okay yuki can you hear me Okay, Bong, can no. you hear me? No? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can Come hear. Can I can hear, hear both of you clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I cannot hear you. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh oh. Um, well, so I guess, <laughs> I guess this part, the next question would be for you, Yuki, uh, uh, which would be, so Bong Vassal, in my eyes, he's, he's, he's a pioneer. Uh, Bong, can you hear me now, Vassal? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can hear you Okay, now. perfect. So, uh, sorry, I gotta move a bit. I'm gonna charge my my computer. <laughs> okay, um, but I just want to say that what's really cool about the both of you is that you, you're thinking big picture, right? You're thinking not just years, but like generations. Um, uh, Yuki, you mentioned going back to Anchor What you know what they've cemented in time and and what they've left for us this generation, and then now it's your turn or our turn, right? Um, so what, what would you say uh, to the next generation of aspiring artists who wants to be part of this movement, this revolution, this momentum that you guys are part of, knowing you know, from your experience and just from your lessons learned, um, you know, to the, the next person says, hey, you know, I wanna be a part of this. This is, this is what's the next step? What, would, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, I think for, for, for the, the upcoming artists, uh, I, I have a, I always have a thought and then I think it's just like what we said mentioned that uh, art and culture and uh, creativity actually is in the bloodline with us since we are born. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we, we're not just saying but if you look at the we look at the history it's there. Uh, Cambodian Khmer people live with art with everything they, they live with. Even the food the way they dress, how they live, place, you know, even like, uh, what, is, what is small thing, even like just uh, something that they, they use for uh, farming. It's also with all of the decoration. If we, if we look it clearly, it's everything with art. So it's, for me, even those we are now a small, young country in the art scene, if you're talking about film is very, 
we were very green and young. We cannot compare. We have to t we have to accept the truth that we cannot compare to the rest of the world. But it doesn't mean we are nothing. But we are going there. So if you believe that you are an artist, if you believe that you have story to tell, tell it, and find a way to tell it. Don't don't let um, the brand, let me say, like the country as a brand, uh, stop you from what you uh, what you want to do. And believe it that uh, uh, you can do so much more in your generation than me, than mine, than Bong Visa, and then you know than than other generation. Like you you have so much more. Uh, opportunity, chance to do it. So, just all all you need to do is to believe that you have. As long as you have something to say, do it. And on, on it doesn't matter. It has to be a big scale of production film, a uh, million dollar film that 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 could make the impacts to the the community or the world. It can be a very simple story that you have something to say. So. Uh, And I know it's hard to be an artist, uh, to to go back home and then tell your mom, your father, that, mom, I am the I am the filmmaker. I I produce the film, <laughs> or I am the singer. Uh, like my sister, like what do you do for life, for living? I'm a singer. Like okay, singer in Cambodia, interesting. So it's a it's 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 it it's rock goes in day one, even with your own family. So. Carry on and believe that you are you are born with the gift, and then don't stop from doing what you need to do. Just do it, and then you will find a way. God will give you the way, and this country will give you the way. And people like you, even like me now, I'm in Cambodia, and you are in the USA. You will create the whole community for uh, Cambodia. I think like at the end of the day, it's about finding each other and sit down and talk, and then plan for the future and what we can do together. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yep. And in closing, and again, I didn't talk to you guys forever, but um, so in closing, Bong Vasal, thank you for the tour, by the way, of of your location. <laughs> I'm glad you found a spot. Um, yeah. So, I, <laughs> can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so so, so uh, a uh, electrical so socket for for the computer. Okay, perfect timing. So so in closing, we might actually have to wrap this up in a little bit. Um, so what? So to the next generation of aspiring artists and creatives, you know, being, having, having been through what you've been through and your experience, I know you guys, you kind of paved the way for a lot of people. Uh, what advice, let's say two, three actionable advices would you give to the next generation of aspiring creatives? Um, I, I think uh, I'm, I, I'm a, first of all, I'm a late bloomer. So a lot of the things that's happening to me and a lot of things that I, that I, that I started doing, I started very late in life and, and I even learned things very late in life. But what matters to me and it always matters for me is, is doing, doing more than talking. I think that's the first thing. I think a lot of people, a lot of young people said they want to do things. They want to do this, they want to do that, they want to do whatever. But they don't do anything. They just talk about it, and they they wait and they wait and they wait, and nothing is happening. I think my first my first advice to all of them, everybody that wants to do something, is to do it and to take the step, the first step to do it. And um, beside that, I mean, you know, we live in in times where technology is way 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 cheaper. I mean, it was so expensive to make films or to record music back in the days, back you know, 20 years ago or 25 years ago. It was so expensive to make films and to make music. Now it, it doesn't cost nothing. There's not not even any, any more excuse about not knowing how to do it because you can find all the information on YouTube, and and you get tutorials and you get all these online schools and courses and stuff like that. So there's no more excuse uh, uh, for the young people to complain about. Oh, I don't know enough. Oh, I don't have money to do it. Oh, I don't know how to do it. Oh, I don't have the money to buy those equipment. I think. They, there's no more excuse to do that. You are able to create with whatever is offered now in this digital time, and um, so do it. And my my last advice: been posting on Facebook and nobody understand what I'm talking about, which is fine. But I'm gonna say it here: is is you know uh, is. Uh, There is a in order to for 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 our, our people to to reach that 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 third golden age, what I, I I call the third golden age. The only way to get there is is to start creating as much as possible, 
whatever you have for you. Oh man, this is the best part. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, we, you, you cut out the last three seconds. Sorry? Yes, we lost you for about five seconds. Okay, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, so we lost you for about 10 seconds. Can you hear me now? A uh, little bit. Okay. So yeah, uh, um, in order for us, like I said, I mean, I, I actually, <laughs> How is it? How is it now? Yeah, it's, it's a little choppy. But um, so, okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave it at that. So uh, the next question is, how can we connect with you? Facebook, social media, where can, where can we connect with you uh, in the future? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah, I'm just going to finish, finish real quick what I was about to say and, okay. and, and get cut, but... I, I, I've been promoting this creative marathon for the past few, few months. I mean, almost a year now. And, and the, the creative marathon I'm talking about is really about pushing every Cambodian creative to create as much as possible and to produce as much as possible. I think the only, the only way for us to reach another golden age in the future is that we start as creative as Cambodian people as to create and produce as creative content as much as possible from now on until we reach that level where we can say that, oh, that's it. I think we, we are about to enter another golden age of Cambodia creative uh, times. And, and, and I truly believe it could happen if everybody, first of all, start having ideas and start making those ideas happen. But also it's all about collaborating between us more and more. Um, so I think for me is, I'm, I'm 49 this year. I'm going to be 50 in one year. I give myself another five years to run the marathon. After that, I'm not going to run anymore, but I'm going to do as much as possible, create mu as much as music as possible. I have a lot of projects in the making right now, feature films. I even work on my next album as well. Uh, so I'm going to do a lot of stuff for the next five years, and I hope people will follow and people will keep, you know, will, will do what I, I hope people will do. And, that's the message for everybody. Yeah, can't stop, won't stop, right? Exactly. <laughs> awesome. exactly. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much. I wish we can talk more, but um, uh, you know, for those who are watching, I'm sorry, I took the time from the update. <laughs> um, no, Hello. Hello. Should... See, already done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. While you were, while, to hear. You know, while, while you were giving us a tour, she she gave us some really good. She gave us a really good answer. So she she did amazing. Um, but that's about all the time that we have for now. Um, so to our audience, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to tune in to uh, uh, Poppy Goes to Hollywood, um, which is uh, make its debut in the Cambodia Town Film Festival 2020, and also Young Love, if you want to get some insight as to uh, the youth of today in Cambodia um, through the eyes and lens of, of the younger generation and what's going on. And so uh, to the both of you, thank you so much again for making the time out. Um, thank you. It's, uh, and by the way, it's, it's noon in Cambodia. It's 10 p.m. here in Long Beach, California. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Cambodia Town Film Festival. So, uh, thank you again to Pratch and Kaylee and the team at the Cambodia Town Film Festival. And again, this is Chad Samith. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be your host tonight. And have a great day. And we'll see you at the film festival. Yeah. Definitely, Alcon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you guys. <laughs>